Okay, when it uh, dries up enough, it can still be sticky, but as long as it doesn't transfer to your finger, it still is a little bit there. So we want to let it set until you can touch it, and don't touch the middle, touch the edges. When it's not transferring to your finger, or wear a glove if you prefer that, then it's ready to lay up. We take a fiberglass. This is going to be made all out of scrap. This is just scrap pieces of fiberglass. You fray the edges. This is an example of how you do that. Just tear it. And that way, when you lay stuff down, if you don't fray it, it's going to have a hard line like that. Eventually, with heating up and cooling down from sunlight, uh, that line will show itself through the surface of your part. So you fray the edges so they made up together, and you don't notice it. You can't see it. So even if you overlap quite a bit, you want the edges frayed. And we will uh, lay this up. Figure out the best way to do it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I lay this up. And I'm probably in the video going to speed most of this up at like one and a half or two times the speed. So you don't have to sit through the whole thing. First, I'll tell you we're going to mix up our resin. You uh, harden this to 1%. So if you have 100 grams, you want one gram of a uh, hardener, MEKP. Say I've done it enough, I can pretty much do it by looking at it. You can go up to 2%, but usually that's just for uh, molds, and you need to be careful of the temperature when you do that. Really don't want to go higher than that on the hardener, which is MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, because it'll get really hot, it can start boiling and fuming, making a smoke, and that smoke's extremely toxic. You should wear a mask when you do this, have a ventilated area. But this is just general purpose polyester laminating resin. The hardener is MEKP, and that's pretty much it. So we'll speed things up now, so I can listen to some music without a copyright violation, and uh, you guys can still watch. Okay. Now. That little tub there that's got acetone in it, my rollers, there's a Bondo spreader I use for spreading the uh, resin out onto the fiberglass. And you'll see how it goes from white to dark colored, or it's actually kind of transparent. It's just showing the brown paper underneath it. If you still see white, then it's not fully saturated. You want to try and saturate it all the way if you can when you do it like this. And another thing you want to do that's just a two inch brush from Harbor Freight. You want to wet out your mold surface, the gel coat. You want to get resin on every bit of it. That just helps prevent transferring air, and you do want resin touching all of the back of the gel coat anyway. So you can just lay your glass on, you can just pick it up, still in those sheets. Now if you let it sit for too long, the, the fiberglass mat like that, it's little like two inch strands of fiberglass and they're all held together and they're in rolls and sheets. There's a binder that they use to hold that together. The polyester resin breaks that binder down. So if you saturate the fiberglass the way I did on the table and let it sit for too long, you'll just be pulling it up in handfuls. It won't be in a sheet anymore. So you want to get it onto the mold as quickly as possible. 
and just start rolling your air out. This is a barrel roller. It's not totally flat. You'll see I pick it up and set it down in the middle of the part and then push the air out to the edge of the mold. Now I don't do that all the time, but when you see that there's air in there you have to squeegee it out to the edge. Don't push too hard with your roller because you'll just wring the resin out of the fiberglass. And you don't want to do that. You need plenty of resin in the fiberglass. And you don't want too much. You don't want it to pool up. The, the ideal way for it to look is kind of a matte finish. So if it's real super shiny on the back there, then it's because you have too much resin. That means the resin is uh, pooling up and reflecting the light. You can uh, scrape your, brudge, your brush on the edge of your cup there, getting the resin out of the brush bristles, and then dab on those really wet parts of your uh, fiberglass there, and the brush will suck up that extra resin, and then scrape it on the rim of your cup again. And just keep doing that until you pull the extra resin out. Now normally I would just have all these pieces cut to the perfect size, but I just have scrap glass that I'm making this out of, so you wouldn't have to do a lot of this tearing and adding extra pieces like I'm doing here. Now I'll slow down so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. That's the barrel roller. Now when you're all done with this, you want to clean up your area. And like you've seen me change gloves in here, you want to have clean hands. Gloves are cheap, so just pull off nasty, filthy gloves and put on a new pair. Right now I'm pulling the extra resin out of the part with a brush. And we'll go on to the next part, which is trimming and popping it out of the mold, drilling it and doing the finishing touches to the part.